me in the pledge. First order of business is the approval of the minutes from July 12th, 2022. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the minutes of July 12th. Second. Motion made by Mr. Court, seconded by Mr. DeLay. Any questions, edits? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 And chair votes aye, thank you. Minutes of August 9th, 2022. This was um, just a regular meeting in the public hearing on the articles. Make a motion to approve the minutes of August 9th. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Court, seconded by Mr. Guerrero. Any errors, omissions, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. I have to abstain. You don't have to, but if you choose to. I you choose can. to. Okay. Since I wasn't there. You do you do know the ruling on that, right? If you have reason to believe or you have watched it on TV and know that the minutes are factual, you can then vote on them even when you're absent. I would still have to abstain. Okay. <laughs> You mean you don't watch us on TV? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Busy with the bachelorettes. <laughs> so, Mr. Saltzbach, if it's okay with you and the board, I would like to take two and three and reverse those so that we can wait till we have a copy of the warrant for all the, all the members. Okay? So we'll go to three. Reserve fund requests. Mr. Saltzbach, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this request is in response to the um, much publicized failed ransomware attack we saw here at Town Hall. Um, as we were going through that process, we had expressed that there was going to be a, a small financial impact, basically meaning that we weren't going to see a multi-million dollar um, you know, ransom attempt for our data. But there would be smaller expenses, such as um, you know, overtime, additional staff hours for remedying the issue, um, the loss of a server. Thankfully, we had a backup one. Um, and so with all of these expenses compiled in the spreadsheet in your packet, uh, while it's going to exceed $10,000 ultimately, it is an issue that's covered under our insurance. So the $10,000 request that we're putting through is the deductible. Um, so we're continuing to accrue smaller pieces, especially where we're hitting the deductible. We want to make sure that we're getting reimbursed for every last scrap, basically, that's out there. But we are going to exceed that 10000 number. Uh, with that said, it's obviously an unbudgeted expense um, where the Finance Committee has their $40,000 reserve. We felt that given it was... Um, you know, about a quarter of what the reserve is, or more than a quarter of the way through the year, that it would make sense to go ahead and use that. Um, in conversations that I actually had with Dr. Ward over the weekend, um, it was questioned whether or not it would be, um, you know, potentially a good move to put it on the warrant instead to try to insulate the reserve fund. Um, and then the thought had since occurred to me since that conversation that we are softly expecting a spring special town meeting. Um, to address the Community Preservation Act potentially. And so, thank you, Linda. Um, so if that does come up and the need does arise, we do have that as a, a backdoor just in case. Um, so with that said, I would like to respectfully request from the Finance Committee the amount of $10,000 to cover the deductible for the ransomware attack that we saw um, earlier this summer. Thank you, Mr. Saltzbeck. I have a couple of questions on, on this. Mm -hmm. um, first, I guess, is the network security assessment, 37-page network security assessment that was done in 2019. Have you had a chance to look at that and say how many of those things were actually corrected? 
Sure, so um, that document predated me and I actually just learned about it thanks to um, a, a tip from a friend. So uh, we will be reviewing that. I do know that there are some elements of that independent of that study that I did ask that we implement upon my arrival to town, for example, um, refreshing passwords every so many months so that they're not there indefinitely, lockout screens and just like little best practice things that I was aware of. Um, I am not an IT person by training. And so I oftentimes rely on you know, the type of documents that you referenced. So as a component of the review that we're going through here um, and kind of performing an autopsy of what occurred, we want to identify some of our um, shortcomings. So this could have been way worse. We, we were pretty well prepared, but we could have been better prepared. We may have been able to avoid this altogether. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, that, that's kind of the ideal outcome here is for it to have not even occurred. So we will be going through that. Uh, we will be implementing some policies and processes moving forward. Some we already have, longer passwords, for example, um, up to 14 digits, little things like that that can help us avoid this. Um, and lockout screens so people aren't shopping. Right, um, yeah, you know, firewall things, locking out certain websites, um, just standard best practices, but it's all things that we would like to implement coming up over the next year or so. Um, we did add a part-time role to the IT department um, with this year's past budget. We haven't hired the individual yet, but um, it's the hope that that role will help kind of um, implement some of those smaller, more mundane issues. But I, I do want to just make sure and make it clear to the public that just because this particular incident has passed us, it doesn't mean we're done addressing it. We'll, we'll be continually working to, to, you know, be better in those areas. Okay. And my second question is to do with overtime for salaried employees. Do we have a policy on when does the overtime kick in? So we have Mr. Croto here at DPW. If we have a three-day blizzard, when does his overtime kick in? Or we have someone like the town clerk who the state continues to add days. She's worked now Saturdays and Fridays, which aren't her regular days, over 100 hours per election. When does overtime kick in for her? And so we set the precedent here. What's the policy? Sure, that's a, a great question. It is something that's partially outlined in the personnel policy. Um, and I think the predominant or the most important thing to highlight here is the difference between salary and hourly employees. Um, and I think in this instance where Mr. O'Neill submits his hours on a, on a weekly basis totaling in, okay, I believe so it's Okay, so he's not salaried. Correct. But it's so, still a valid question for the... For it, the it's an excellent yeah. question. It's good to get it on the record and get it out there. Um, you know, technically, um, I should be doing a 40-hour week. That never happens. No, <laughs> um, so, exactly. Yeah, and you don't want to set the precedent um, or, you know, for Mr. Crowder or anybody else if, we're, if it's a situation where it's a salary employee and they're working beyond that time period. Um, we don't want to be stuck in a situation where we're paying them out for that. I think this was just an extraordinary right. situation. So you would look at something like comp time or something for if something untoward happened Typically, to a salary. Typically, that's the preference, yep. Okay. Do any, any, any questions on this for Mr. Saltzwang? No. I've deleted, you know, exhausted the questions, have I? <laughs> Doug? No questions. Do I have a motion then to accept the transfer from the reserved fund account 011-562-524310 to information technology software support in the sum of $10,000? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions? Comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. So, because Tom is not here, do I need to sign these for you? I would say yes. Okay. And if we need him yeah, to come in, we'll, dra we'll drag him in after the fact. If I can just do it as I go along, it will save some time later. Okay. So the second request, this is this is a really big one. Request to transfer the amount of nine dollars and sixty-seven cents from the reserve account to the for the DPW clerk, Mr. Saltzman. Sure. So that's one of I believe two. Um, personnel related discrepancies. So it was just a, a small accounting error basically. Um, and where we were seeing them are areas where we had um, turnover in a position. So that's one of them and I believe the other one is the treasurer. 
Okay, so any questions for Mr. Salzbach on this one? This is to transfer the amount of $9.67 from the reserve to DPW clerk. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve this request. Second. 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 Motion by Mr. Court, seconded by Mr. Guerrero. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. I don't know. That's a huge one. Mm. <laughs> And the third request is for $397.15 from the reserved account to the, um, is that the Treasurer Department head salary? That is correct. So we actually did come through for a year end transfer for that and the uh, um, accounting was just off by a little bit. So when Joanne went to close out the year end, um, she caught that error. Okay, so do I, questions? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. DeLay, seconded by Mr. Quartz. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the chair votes aye. Okay, you all have a copy of the draft warrant now. I'm just Well, I'm out. So I think we'll give it back to you. Thank you, Madam okay. Chair. So if, it, ready? if it works for the committee, um, I'm going to run through each of these articles one by one. At the end of the article, I'll pause if you have any questions, and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay. So the first one um, is just a usual and customary article, the committee report. Um, it could be passed over if the committee doesn't feel necessary to put in a report. The second article is prior year bills, also usual and customary. Um, we're still working to nail down the exact figures. This document is in draft form, um, so it's a little bit of a living document and we'll be polishing it up over the next two weeks. So we should have final figures in time for the selection meeting on the 26th. For capital articles, the Capital Planning Committee has met um, once so far this fiscal year. They'll be meeting again next Monday to finalize some of these, uh, but these are their recommendations at this time. Um, so Article 3 is $100,000 for the purchase of supplemental downtown streetlight improvements. We're recommending that come from free cash. So basically for the work on Central Street, the street lights that we have there, we did calculate out how much additional it would cost to have the municipal style historic street lights. Um, while it's a state project, the state will only cover the base level. So in calculating that, we had um, hoped that Robinson Broadhurst Foundation would be able to cover the remaining amount. Um, and we ended up being $65,000 short in that area. So that's a portion of that 100,000. The remaining 35,000 is for the same style street lights in other areas throughout downtown where we've been doing improvements. So for example, the small pocket park at the corner of Lake and Spring Street down by the water, as well as the new parking lot that was approved at a recent town meeting um, between Pleasant Street and Central Street for a total of 100,000. Any questions on that one? Um, I guess my question, I know you can't give me a, an exact figure for free cash. What do you anticipate it to be? So that number was in flux a little bit. It was between um, roughly 1.8 million best case scenario or uh, 600,000 worst case scenario. Okay, because we have, I'm just looking at, I'm jumping ahead to eight, nine, 10, and 11, which is our OPEB and our healthcare costs. And that's about 370,000 that will be needed for that. And, mm -hmm. I don't think that can be played with because that will come back to bite us. So yep. hopefully it's the 1.8 or 1.3 or somewhere around in there. Thank you. And Any questions for Mr. Saltzbeck on the no. lights? No questions. Okay. These are ones that are going to be easy to replace bulbs or whatever it is that we need to replace. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and, and just another note on the free cash, at this time it's looking like we're leaning towards the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So um, 
but it's, it's only it, Tuesday. You don't give bad news on the beginning of the I week. I like to get it out of the way. So, um, so the issue there is it's not that we're really losing free cash. It's, it's more of an artificial lowering of the free cash and that we're not seeing a, re a reimbursement for some grants that are outstanding, um, a small handful from the town and then a, a larger total amount on the school side. Um, and I did have a good meeting with Superintendent King this morning and we're working together to try to get the state to move through and issue that refund. So basically what it's hanging on is if the state can refund us those expenses from the grant before September 30th, then our free cash will be more robust. Um, if they can't, then it's going to be that lower figure. Um, another caveat that the Capital Planning Committee had put forth was that should it be the lower free cash scenario, the ask is that these items be funded through borrowing rather than free cash. Um, and that's why I have actually both options for either a majority vote for free cash or two thirds to borrow on the bottom. And that will be finalized by the 26th as well. Any questions on that? Okay. Article four, um, we're requesting $215,000 for phase two of the library repairs. So uh, a question arose at last night's Board of Selectmen meeting um, from a selectman who shall remain unnamed on whether or not uh, that figure held up. So the question is a $70,000 give 75. or take, or, excuse me, $75,000 remainder um, from the first phase of the library repair if we're still holding that in account. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from our accountant just to make sure we didn't turn it back. That happens from time to time. Um, the other question was, if that was if that figure was baked into a figure from um, a recent town meeting where we went back to get more funds for the library project so uh, the number will not be any higher than that 215 right now I'm, I'm leaning towards it's probably going to be reduced by about 70 or 75 thousand but we'll narrow that down so that, that's one piece of that I the, did I did check article 12 from the May 16th 2022 town warrant and it passed, there was no um, additional information given that the 75,000 was gonna be taken off the library. It was a total of 650,847, of which 314,500 went directly to the library. Mm -hmm. I, I went back and looked at it this afternoon that. as well. So the only thing left up in arms is the 75,000 from the library funds. Right, and whether or not we turned it back. So that's pretty much the, the last outstanding piece. The other question is why are we coming back again for the phase two of the library? So um, we went out to bid and we got official numbers. We have a contractor lined up, um, it came back just over a million dollars total for the project, meaning that we are going to be shy um, by about that $215,000 figure or that less 75,000. Um, so those are real figures. That is what the cost is definitively. We're not working off projections like we were in the past. Um, and so this will be the last and final time we come back for that purpose. So did you go with D.A. Sullivan and Sons for the library? Uh, City Enterprise. City Enterprise came in at 996785? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and the, the other, the next, there were two bids, the next one wasn't far off. So right. it's always good to have at least two there so you they can kind very of close. see if it's a ridiculous number that they throw out sometimes. So we're hoping that Article 4 will be reduced by 75,000. Correct. Which would bring us to about 145, one, 140, 140, yeah. give or take. I'm just trying to see if our worst case scenario in free cash, we can s still do what we need to do. From what I've calculated out, I think we're going to have to do a borrowing on all of them. Yeah, we'll be just under the 600,000. About well, five hundred and eleven thousand. If we um, do everything in free cash that we put in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, right. Any questions on the library? No. This is not a public hearing. We'll have to, all questions will have to be at the end. Sorry, Mr. Lucia. Go ahead. Um, Article five. So 
this $95,000 we're recommending to supplement the fiscal year 23 highway materials line. Um, we had a fiscal year 23 paving plan in place. The numbers that we got for that, we usually get um, you know, sometime around the middle of winter, or early spring, and then by the time annual town meeting rolls around, the number's set. But by the time we go out to pave in the summer, um, especially this year, there, there's a significant cost escalation um, due to material costs. So uh, separately, the budget they received from the state ended up being um, about $85,000 more generous than we thought it was going to be at the time of the annual town meeting because we're working on projections from the state at that point in time. So it was our thought to put that funding to use um, and to put it into the roads because there's certainly a need there that I think most people wouldn't dispute. Um, but the other piece is if we put those paving items off until next year, it's gonna be that much more expensive. Um, so we are looking to address Pleasant Street, a uh, section of Summer Street leading into Central Street um, and Island Road. Are there any questions? Good, thank you. Article six. So I will note that a two third vote is required on this. Um, it would be a debt exclusion. Chief Smith was present with the capital planning committee um, and it was a request of the capital planning committee that it go through as a debt exclusion. Reason being um, it would act as a referendum on town support for the project. So prior to my arrival in town at a previous town meeting, there was a price tag of about 12 and a half million for the fire station. One of the tasks I was charged with upon my arrival was to work with Chief Smith and to work with the architect to try to carve out um, some pieces on that and, and bring the price down. So right now we're at about eight and a half million. Uh, the $618,750 figure is representative of the design cost. So one thing we keep coming up is, or keep seeing coming up is people saying, well, didn't we already pay for that? So what the community has already paid for was a feasibility study. So it was pretty much a needs assessment for the fire station and it provided a very broad view layout and overhead um, of what it would look like, but it's not actual buildable you know, construction documents that we could put out to bid and have a contractor actually build something from. So this $618,000 figure is representative of actual plans, buildable, biddable plans um, for that potential eight and a half million dollar fire station. Um, another component is public outreach, which I had a meeting with the chief today about, you know, taking advantage of the next five to six weeks and making sure that there's more opportunities for the public to directly ask questions. It has come before the capital planning committee within the last year. It came before the board of selectmen. Um, I can't recall if it came before finance committee showing the, um, the reduction in design and reduction in cost. So there has been some public um, opportunities for input, but not enough. And so we want to make a big push on that over the next five to six weeks. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> Um, we spent just somewhere close to 100 or just over 100,000 on needs assessment. It really didn't turn into a needs assessment. It was a Q&A on what do you want and a list of wants assessment. There was really no needs attached to it. The one thing that did come out is the fire station has no code violations in, despite of what some folks in town like to, to spread. There were no code violations. And we asked the chief, even back then, could you look at alternatives? So instead of 24-hour shifts, 12-hour shifts. He says, no, can't do that. We would need not more people. You have four 24-hour shifts. You have eight 12-hour shifts, same number of people on a, on a four-day basis. Every full-time member still gets their automatic eight hours of overtime. You would not need bunks. You would not need all the extra showers. You could stagger start and stop times between the two shifts if you needed to or between the people because he said one of the things is if we have an ambulance call and the next one comes in, it runs over. So stagger, you know, you start at 12, you start at one for your 12 hour shift. Um, there was no needs assessment done of call volume. I took two years, right to no request from the dispatch 
between one o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the morning in one year, there was four calls for the entire year. So you could do 10 hour shifts, cost effective. One of the things that comes up all the time is, well, the ambulance makes us money. Well, if you look at the cost of personnel, it's 1.2 million. If you look at benefits for that person, those personnel, it comes up to about 1.8 million. The revenue from the ambulance is 745,000. One million to have an ambulance service in town. And I guess, and, and right now, I just got the year to dates for tonight's meeting. The fire station has already used 31% of their overtime budget. Now, in the last two years, that was $300,000 in overages and overtime budget, and they'd already budgeted over $100,000. Part of that is because if you have 10 members and two are out sick, change your schedule to meet with the personnel you have. If you go by the original schedule, you need 12 people. We only have 10. So I, I guess when I look at this, and, and I'm not against the fire department. I wouldn't be fighting for them to get some ARPA funds if I was against them. But I want to see more due diligence and more care about the cost on the backs of the citizens of Winchenden. And I just see it being blown off. Like, we're the fire department, everybody loves us, we can get what we want. And it, it, it bothers me that no one is looking carefully at it. 7% escalator costs. All new construction so far this year has run 22 to 23% over costs. So add another 15% to that, we're at 10 million. Wait a couple of years, we'll probably be back up to our 13, 14 million for less than we asked for to start with. I, I, I guess I, I, I just would like to see a little more care about what it's costing the people in this town. We have a water line, we have to replace. There's no point in having a brand new fire station if we don't have water coming in. And I think one of your selectmen mentioned last night, it's, it's unfortunate that it all came at this time, but we just can't afford everything. Questions, comments? I agree. I agree what you just said. That, uh, yeah, I just looked at the 31% overtime. <clears throat> Is there any way of having them on call? Um, no, I don't, I don't know. One of the things that was asked before was to look at someone like there's Woods Ambulance Service. Have them contracted for Winchenden with the stipulation written into the agreement they must have one ambulance on site in Winchenden at all times. It wasn't even researched or looked at. But we have to do something. Mr. Quartz? Yeah, what was on the warrant that was denied at the town meeting? Ooh, that's a good question. I did not look that up. Because was it for the full project? No, it was not the full, was it the full project? So is my understanding, to the best of my recollection from what I've read, is that it was for the, the design fee and construction costs. Yeah, so it was just over a million, right? Mm -hmm. Because for the original fire station, it was going to be a million. So it wasn't even the cost of the fire station. It was just designs again. And then if, if it can't get built, you have the design. Well, maybe, because codes change as, as years go on. It, it was, I think it was the construction cost as well, design and construction, the last that time 15 it million that they requested? Mr. DeLay, can you remember? I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, we can get the details the next time we uh, Yeah. The, the reason why I was asking is because if it was the bulk of the project and it was denied yeah. why are we doing a design phase if we don't even know if the town wants to proceed further because they didn't approve it to begin with i believe the intent there is that if the town determines that they don't want to move forward that they'll vote down the design fee i think i would just like because i know that chief smith said that when it was denied the last time that he would have public outreach, he would have meetings. None of that ever happened. Of course, we had COVID hit us. 
most of the arguments we hear is, well, we need separate showers for men and women. Well, if you have a 12-hour shift, you don't. If you have a fire or a hazmat condition, portable showers come from Worcester. So that becomes a non-issue. All that plumbing goes away. That's huge. So you could have a shed out the back for the equipment, um, which would take the load off inside. And you would have bunk rooms that you could now expand and use. Maybe if they're in the, in the overnight shift, the 12-hour shift, like the policemen do at night, they can do online classes and courses if they don't have calls. And I think part of the, the issue is that, you know, some of the solutions, um, and I'm not looking to debate it tonight, um, so I can get home in a reasonable hour, but some of the solutions you're describing I think make sense um, for what we're looking at today. And I think part of the concern on the other side of the issue is, well, where are we going to be at in 15 or 20 or 30 years, which we, we can't really project. And so when they're looking at building this fire station, it's not building a fire station for today. It's building a fire station. It's 20 years ago they said that we were going to be, our population was going to be doubled. Well, it's not. 30,000. You know, yeah. so yeah. And um, I guess it, it may not be feasible, what I'm suggesting, but I would just like an honest evaluation rather than just being blown off and saying it can't work. Because mm -hmm. 12-hour shifts do work in other towns. 10-hour mm -hmm. shifts do work with a four-hour hiatus between one and five. So just something to look at. Any other questions? Not here. Okay, thank you. That was gentle, I was, I was expecting more. <laughs> um, Article seven, so th this is the big one that came up last night. Um, it's the main transmission line for the water. We have a, the Joint Water Authority, we share the plant with Ashburnham. Um, and that pipe has been identified as failing for about the past decade. So uh, when we're talking about inflation costs and, and putting in escalators, when I first got to town less than a year and a half ago, this was referred to as the $6 million pipe. Um, and it, it's now almost a $10 million pipe. So um, with that said, we're looking to take some action on this because it's not going to get any cheaper and the condition of the pipe is not gonna get any better, and we just, we need to do something. So uh, DPW Director Croto has been going through the process, and we've been investigating the Clean Water and Drinking Water State Revolving Fund, which would provide an opportunity for us to take a low interest loan for the cost of that. Um, the rate is about 2.4%, so less than the rate of inflation. Uh, it's really a good deal. 19% of that would be forgiven um, pretty much as a guarantee. So right off the bat, you're in pretty good shape. Um, but with that said, even with that forgiveness, over the course of that 30-year loan, um, it would come out to an annual payment of roughly $350,000 a year. Was that like something like about $85 on a $300,000 household of value? Oh, what, what that would come out to? Yeah. Well, so that's part of the question is how would that shake out? So, um, and using the formula that you, that you just referred to, that's if it's being spread out among every, you know, tax bill okay. in town. Yeah. And part of the conversation here is, is it something that should be on the back of exclusively the ratepayers, or should it be a mix? Um, it should be a mix. Right, and, that, and that's what we're investigating right now. I think most people agree it should be a mix. Um, there isn't a ton of agreement on what those proportions look like just, just yet, but that's going to have to be part of the community conversation. Um, beyond that, we're also looking at other opportunities to blend in funding. Um, we do have a limited amount of ARPA funds left, um, and if the you know, f hazard pay, for example, goes through, that takes a bite out of it. But if, you know, say, and these are all hypotheticals that, that I'm not expecting to be held to, just hypotheticals, but if we took 500,000 out of ARPA and put it on that um, to take some of the hurt out of it. If we went to Robinson Broadhurst, who typically award us on the town side roughly about a million dollars a year, if we asked them to take you know, 350,000 a year over the next three years, because the first payment's not due until um, I believe 25 or 26, that would take a million off. We'd have a million right. in hand ready to go before that loan Just hits. chip away at it. And, and just and try to get things in. Yep. Put a tickler for yourself to go back to May 18th, 2015, mm -hmm. Article 16, because on that, the town voted to use solar money 
for capital projects. Hmm. And I don't believe that's ever happened. So that should be researched because if, if the, the town voted and it passed, you know, 85% you know, or something. But I keep seeing while well, we're sharing it with the school, we're sharing it with the town. That was never the intent. So that might ha need a little more research. There might be some dollars there you can tap into. Good to know. Um, and we're also looking on the state and federal level as well to see if we can get some money from them um, just to reduce that burden, which even then that's you know dropping that annual payment from 350 down to 250. Uh, but we're gonna do everything that we can do to try to get that number down, but we really can't put that project off any longer. No, because it's 72 years old. It was built in 1950. That's, even, that, that's almost as old as some people in the crowd. <laughs> wow. Ruthless. Any, um. <laughs> any questions? No. Go ahead, Mr. Saltzbach. I think we could probably take 8, 9, 10, and 11 in a group, considering there are policies. Sure, yep. So uh, and you hit the nail on the head, so they're your policy. So uh, the OPEB figure is representative of a percentage of the annual amount that we pay for healthcare. So that's how we came to that 110, 593 number. Article 9, 50,000, um, that's just a, a set number to contribute towards the contractual separation payouts. Um, the 160,000 for the stabilization fund, it's also representative of a percentage, I believe it's 10% of free cash. That number is going to go down, once again, depending on where free cash lands. So we put it in a little high, um, but I do expect that to decrease. And uh, Article 11 is a newer one. I had a conversation with Chairman Kane over the weekend about this, um, establishing a one-time $50,000 finance committee special reserve for energy costs. So as you may recall, when we were going through the budget process um, leading up to last May, I had padded the budget a little bit um, on the energy side of things on the hope that things would at minimum plateau. And unfortunately, as we've gone through the summer, um, it has just continued to skyrocket. So. Um, even with our, our doom and gloom expectations in May, uh, the reality is, is somehow somewhat worse. So we want to make sure that we have a little bit of a buffer carved out there on the off chance that we're getting halfway, three quarters of the way through the year, most of the way through the winter, and we find that we've already expended our entire budget for fuel costs um, or electricity. Any questions on that? Okay. Okay. Um, Article 12 and Article 13 are um, not new. So Article 12 was from the May 2021 annual town meeting. It was approved, but it never went to ballot. So we need to bring it back to a town meeting again. Article 13 um, was new at this most recent annual town meeting, but we opted to pass over, uh, reason being that we had learned that that 2021 item um, had expired. So we wanted to lump them both together so that we weren't dipping in and out of the charter making amendments every annual town meeting. And maybe on 12, before it's finalized, do you put a caption, something like Article 13, just to remind people of what, even what the articles were that the changes were in? Mm -hmm. I don't think there was a lot. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty small, um, and I would like to rework that. I'm also actually kind of curious, um, and it, I mean, it's a question for you really, but in a different, in your other capacity with another hat on, if it might make sense to just combine those changes. I, I would think so. And just do one article. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and if that's the case, then we can draft something yeah. and get it together. Yeah. And it, I, I know the town was very aware. It seems to me it was like the postcard and not sending out a warrant to every household unless they required it to save a little bit of postage and paper costs. There, it wasn't significant changes to the charter itself. It was just how we did some town meeting business and I guess changing capitalization, gender, that kind of stuff. Correct. Um, and so that is the entirety of the document for now, once again, in draft form. Um, and we'll continue to work on it over the next couple weeks. And our public hearing will be September 28th at 7 o'clock. 27th. 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 Yep. Yep. yep, 27th.
Any other questions for Mr. Salzbeck while we have him here? I do. Well, thank you all for your uh, commitment to the community. It's appreciated. If you could just give us an update on our open positions, treasurer, accountant, uh, secretary, executive assistant, director of planning and development. Sure. Um, so we've had a significant amount of turnover over the past year, and that will continue realistically for, for the next year, more than likely. A majority of them are due to retirements. So our collector clerk, um, in the treasurer's office, Kelly Wood will be retiring at the end of this month. We had an interview today actually and selected a replacement. Um, we haven't publicly announced two yet, but we're negotiating that. Um, the vacancy in the treasurer's office, we ended up promoting the assistant treasurer into that position. Um, we'll be keeping Donna Spellman on in a consulting capacity as needed. Um, it's pretty expensive to keep somebody on in that capacity full time. So we'll still have some support there. Um, Zoe DuPont, she won't be on her own, um, but we'll have to backfill her, her assistant role. And so that one we'll be interviewing for over the next couple weeks. So that is just the treasurer's office. Um, separately, uh, we still have outstanding the director of planning and community development. We had put that out twice and we only received three responses um, for now. The feedback we've received from the planning board uh, is that things seem to be going smoothly with the staff we have now. So we're just kind of assessing and, and seeing how things are moving along. We might do a little reorganization down there. A big part of that job was grants. I mean, huge. And it might be worth considering and chatting about just having a grants person uh, with a very low base salary and any incentives are based on the percentage of the grant she brings in or he brings in. Something worth considering. Because um, they could, a lot of folks could do that from home. They could do that in the evening. It's, uh, it's a nice second gig. And as long as they're competent, they can do well for us. That's true. And it, it would realistically could look more like a consultant <laughs> more than anything else, um, unbenefited and yep. just, you know, something to supplement. Or, or I, I remember back in a former life and I had a great grant person who said, just pay my benefit, my medical benefits, and I will take all my salary out of the grants. She almost doubled our grants in two years, and it cost us 40 grand a year. It was nothing to what we got. So that, that may be a good path forward, yeah. um, but we're, we're still assessing. Um, separately, we had uh, outside of the building, our police chief, Chief Walsh, is set to retire coming up at the end of the year. Um, in conversations with the Board of Selectmen, we have tapped Sergeant Dan Walski um, to be acting chief. And so we'll see how that process goes, but we're very excited. Um, and he's extremely capable. He's been with the PD for a really long time. Um, and it, well respected. It, yeah, should be good to see his leadership. Um, jumping back into the building, Joanne Gogan, our town accountant, is set to retire at the end of October. Yeah. So that's going to be a tough loss. Um, we're currently in the process of discussing that. The Board of Selectmen discussed it in an executive session last night in terms of what a you know, replacement would look like for that, okay. um, whether the position would stay the same or if we would shift it, if we would try to um, work something out and have a shared position with the schools. And that's all kind of in flux at this time. Or have time. a company. Right. Do it. So, um, then in my office, uh, we currently have a vacancy in the administrative assistant role, and um, Mrs. Linda Daigle, my executive assistant, will be retiring um, in the next few months, but we haven't nailed down a date yet. Things are kind of in flux there as well. So um, we have been interviewing, and actually as of a couple hours ago, I think we finalized something um, with a really good candidate. So we'll be announcing that soon as well. Um, we are very much in flux. Yeah, yeah, there, there's, yeah, there's a lot going on in town right now. And um, I think the silver lining side of me says there's a lot of opportunity in that. Um, we can get some fresh ideas um, and, you know, kind of make a new push, maybe go in a new direction as a community. I think it's kind of representative of where this town is today anyway. Um, you know, outside of the personnel side of things, I think the town is very much in transition. And so it should be interesting. Um, so potential pitfalls, though, is we're losing a lot of institutional uh, knowledge. Well, yeah, if yeah. you talk about, you know, network from mm -hmm. three years ago, or you look at the solar thing from 2015, uh, unless there's lots of conversations and you maintain some of those old, old guard relationships, 
you'll miss some of that. Yeah. Um, and then just in general, instability, um, just for the sake of morale is, is sometimes stressful. And so we want to make sure that we're taking care of our employees that um, stick around and that we you know, make, make it clear and communicate how appreciative we are of the employees that are choosing to hang it up and retire. Um, a lot of them put a lot of time in, you know, in this building and move the community forward in a lot of areas. So if you bump into them around town, um, just make sure you thank them. Right. My last question is, when are we putting in the RFQ out for the audit firm? Because I know that we have exhausted our renewals for Mr. Roselli. Mm -hmm. So sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, and I think what I'd like to do is, with that prompt, give the audit committee a nudge to maybe meet again. Um, yeah, because I know that they should be the ones directing you to put it out, but if they don't, I don't think the town can wait. But under charter, the audit committee must interview and make the recommendation to the mm -hmm. board of selectmen. So, um, and if, I know the chair is very busy, but it still has to be done, whether it goes through the vice chair or it still has to be done. Right, and, and I think realistically, I'd like to get that um, at least rolling out the door before the holidays hit, yeah. um, but after a special town meeting. I have a good, I have yeah, a good window because there. really, by the time you interview January, February, they need to have some time to get up to speed so they can hit the ground running July 1. Right. Um, and, 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 the, and especially with audit committees, because if we wait too late, they're going to be already booked with everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like doing a superintendent of school search. The earlier, the better, because you yeah. get the cream. Any other questions for the, before we let him go home, before he has to come back? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate your time. Year-to-date reports, um, I touched on it a little bit. I, uh, I, the fire department overtime is at 31%. We're at like 16% way through the year, so I'm very no. concerned about that. No, I think that gentleman had a question or something? Uh, public comments coming up. Oh, oh, oh. We, we follow. I didn't know if you had it for. for no, well, Justin. we follow the schedule. Because oh, okay. public hearing is when anybody can ask. Oh, okay. Okay. So the other thing I noticed was water and sewer for the schools. Every one of them is 200, 210, uh, 228 percent over budget already, like 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. So I think that's a question we'll have to ask the superintendent whether. They have a contingency, they have a fund that they're going to look at that. Um, I was a little bit concerned about that one. Uh, workers' comp, we've already used 86% of that. That's a question for Joanne. Uh, is it a lump sum that we pay anticipating what we're going to need for the year? In which case, we don't have a lot of dollars left. Now, I know some of you didn't get your packets until tonight, so you didn't, it was, Adrian, you had yours early. Did you have any other things that s jumped out at you? No. Doug? No, the, well, the only other thing that, that I saw that was, I had a question about was in the water enterprise on page three towards the bottom, the debt service, the budget for the year is 438000 and we've already expended 394000 yeah. of that number. I would assume it would be a monthly payment and not a upfront payment well, I'm for the year. And I'm wondering if they have just encumbered it and not paid it, but it doesn't, it's not, not showing under the encumbered, encumbered right. line. Right. So that's a good question for Joanne. Just yeah. curious. Yeah. And I think that we have to, do part of our goals, we have to be more forceful and, and when we see these things to get the answers and not just wait and assume they're going to correct them. Yeah, I mean, there was, the, uh, this is not a question for tonight necessarily, but I think someone needs to educate me on encumbrance versus you if know, we, actual expense. If we have a, like in the school department, if I hire a teacher and they're at 54,000, I know I've got 54,000, that's the contract they signed, I encumber 54,000 because it's a contract. So then I know what I have left to play with. 
But if I look at the if I look at the schools, they don't do it. They don't encumber teacher salaries, but they encumber rubbish removal. Right, and we've and, we've argued that with the schools since I've gone on the finance committee because it gives a false picture right. of what you have to work with. It's not consistent, no, right? So. Not at all. So the goals, uh, number five, I'd like to table to the 27th. And when Mr. King comes back, he will revise that um, agenda so that we meet earlier and talk about our goals before we have our public hearing. Okay. So keep probably 6 o'clock, 6.15 free. I don't think it'd take more than 45 minutes to do the goals. With your permission, I'd like to flip-flop 6 and 7 so I can give Mr. Lucia a chance to speak if he would like to. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Hi. Uh, I'll come back for the public hearing with more detail about, but the only thing I wanted to bring forward is uh, Article 7. Now would be a great time to look at that two and a half override, because that would supplement um, some of the beginning of it, where he says he needs $360,000. It's currently at 360 something. If that two and a half override was used for the first year or second year or third year, then it gives time to go find more funding or give Robinson Broadhurst time to dig into that. And that money is the towns. It's not the schools anymore. It was theirs for that one time. But if we bring it up and start hammering it now, it's not going to be a big surprise to the school you know, that that money is not theirs. It has to be voted on each and every year as part of the Prop 2.5 law. That's a and good point. And we've just been sliding it and supplementing it into their budget. And no, it's about time we started using it, the town itself. You know, the, town, the, the school gets shiny new things. The town has to use hand-me-downs. That's got to stop. Yeah, thank you. That's a really good idea. Because without the water, we don't have a school It's either. a revenue source that could be used continually. It could mm -hmm. be used for the whole down project. And then other money is available for other, other items. Thank you, Mr. Lucia. Yep. Appreciate that. Okay. Do you, uh, do you know what the Prop 2.5 was? I'm sorry? Do you know what the Prop 2.5 was? It was like years ago, it was put into place for something the school needed. But by mass law, Prop 2 and a half, after that initial use, then goes to the town, and they decide how to use it. It's always gone to the school every year. There's been no discussion on using it for anything and else. Two and a half is property on. It's property about tax? 300 and just under 400,000 right now. Yeah, it's 356 plus two and a half. Yeah, so pretty close. So, Mr. And I think this has been brought up now. This would be the third year that. We've started to talk about maybe it's time the town used the money. And the school just keeps it just carrying keeps, it over? Yeah, yeah. If you'll look back at past Warren articles and you'll see the school funding, it'll have that piece in there. It's just kind of buried in there. It's not like a separate Warren article, which is, I guess, to be totally transparent, it should have been a separate Warren yeah. article each year. Any, any comments? I did. I, I missed the nine. Uh, I took <laughs> almost an hour. <laughs> I still beat the selectmen, though. <laughs> Any, no comments. No. Okay. We'll see you all on the twenty seventh, and Tom will give us an update. Six 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 fifteen. I'm not sure which it'll be. Uh, motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Uh, at seven twenty seven.